think, you know, just looking at the initial pendant, you know, it was, it was powerful, but wow, intimidating. As you said, like the BlackBerry, all these physical buttons, dense menus, steep learning curves. We had to sort of do things like cut down the setup times through just simplifying the interface as well, and then reduce that overall learning curve and, you know, the, the user friction wherever possible. And I mean, I think we've discussed it before, this really was sort of a UX dream project as we got to sort of flex our, our HMI design skills. So looking into it, I mean, some of the, the sort of practical things that we addressed, I think in order for it to be easy to pick up and use, we, we literally had to start from the ground up and we sort of had to focus on those tenets of, of simplicity and consistency. So everything needed to be as simple as possible. The design had to be consistent. So, you know, if you knew how to operate one screen, it would be pretty simple to move to the next one. And I think we got to, to leverage some of those sort of age old or the OG UX principles, things like Fitz Law, just to sort of improve the speed and accuracy of interactions. Because there was a, a big sort of push for cost reduction as well to make it more affordable in the certain sort of specific models of these robotic arms, was just a default tablet with a custom housing. So we needed to look at how do people hold that housing? You know, what are the, the target areas for, you know, what fingers are they going to use? Because you have to throw out the window, it's not a mobile device where you know, right, your thumb's going to be using it or a typical tablet. You know, it had different grips on it. It had one or two manual buttons as well. I think a safety button, that sort of thing in the sort of custom housing on the tablet.